Hello, church family. Today we're going to be in Luke chapter 14. A lot of awesome stuff in our reading uh, today, for sure. It's good. It's good. Um, but as I was taking notes and just kind of walking through this and trying to figure out what I wanted to, uh, to talk about and to share, uh, something came to mind. I think as believers, one of the hardest things for us to do is to take this knowledge that we have of Scripture, what we've been taught, um, everything that we know about Christ, and connect that with our heart. I mean, just what we learned about today, we talked about, you know, the rules and right and wrong. Uh, we talked about humility. We talked about discipleship. And honestly, when, when we're put into situations in life, do, does the knowledge that we know on how Christ acted and how um, his followers responded and, and things like that, the, the things that we know how we should react in those situations, do we do so? And, and I have to admit to you, like, I mean, even though I think I have all this knowledge, right, of the scriptures, I find myself falling short from time to time. I find myself when I'm put, when push comes to shove, I, I, I make a lot of mistakes. And yes, I know, I know, I know what Romans um, says and what Paul shares in, in the book of Romans, that flesh and spirit are, are at odds with one another. They're at battle. And on this side of heaven, that, that constant struggle is going to be there. We have to, we have to constantly be removing our flesh. We got to constantly be letting the spirit take over, have control, right? Understand that, 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 that battle that wages within us between flesh and spirit. But what I would like to do and what Christ acknowledges at the end of this, becoming more like a disciple is learning how to take that knowledge and apply it and, and, and to really focus on that and to know that, that I am practicing these things that the Lord uh, has asked of me or has taught me. In verse 25, we kind of jump into the heart of discipleship here. We get into the ideas of what it's going to cost you. And in verse 25, it says, Now a great crowds accompanied him. I'm going to stop right there because this is important. Um, something that we see from Jesus from time to time. He does not always say the easiest things in front of big crowds. Uh, usually when a big crowd's around, Jesus is about to say something really tough. He's about to say something very difficult. And it's important that I make that note because what we are about to read is tough stuff. Let's not, let's not make nothing less of it. It is tough. So it says, verse 25, Now great crowds accompanied him. And he turned and said to them, if, that if anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. And here's what I'm not going to do. I don't want to make the mistake that, that I've, I've seen others make before when trying to teach this passage. When we try to make this relatable or, or, or try to get you know, people to understand it. It's, it's real easy if you're not careful to, to kind of, when you try to make it relatable, you take the meaning out of it. You take the whole purpose. Like what Christ is saying out is, what Christ is saying here is really hard to hear. It's not easy. It's not going to make you feel comfortable. The, 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 you know, the, the, the spirit is probably, you know, convicting you of something. He's probably judging you and, and holding you accountable for your righteousness and your attempts at these things. So when you read something like this, you might not feel the most comfortable because you think of those things that you constantly put in the way of Jesus, where you constantly put in his rightful place, which is the throne of your heart, you, you put something else there. And, it, and Jesus says, goes to an extreme here, but it's not an extreme to him. He's, he's saying, this is what it costs. And Jesus here, he talks about your family and your own life. Even if your family or your own life is, is on the chopping block, whether you choose me or them, Jesus says, choose me. That's what it means to be a disciple. It's going to cost you something. 
And what Christ here says, when it says, take up your cross and follow him, it means it's going to cost you everything. Most of us agree that if you took my family and my life away, that would be everything. You're taking everything away from me. And so what Jesus is trying to get us to understand, that discipleship and following him will cost you everything. And, 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 and we're going to fight against that. Flesh is going to be, what, what, what is that worth? Like, it's going to cost you that much. Is it worth that? Is it worth it? And most of us know it is. Most of us know that this life with Jesus and following him and being disciple as him means so much more than all of that. That Jesus is so much more than all of that. He says this in verse 28. He uses this example of a builder. And then also an example of a king in war, but we won't, we won't read all of it. But here's the example of the builder in verse 28. It says, For which of you, desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the costs, whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid the foundation and it is not able to finish it, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish I mean, we've probably been guilty of this before too. When we see new projects go up in Huntsville or in the Madison area and we see this building being built and it's just like kind of years have gone by and nothing ever moved in there, no restaurant, no nothing's kind of went into that building or maybe you saw a neighbor start a building project and it's like, well, I didn't finish that, <laughs> right? All of us from time to time have been guilty of seeing someone start something and not seeing it through. And I think what Christ is trying to say here, with your life and with faith, that's kind of the same situation. Don't get involved with this if you haven't sat down and, and understood what this means for your life, what it means for, for, for your family, what it means for, for the rest of, of what's going to be asked of you from him. Have you counted the cost? Have you realized what following Jesus means? And when I think of this term, count the cost, when I think of this, I go back to my summer camp days. I used to work summer camps and, and put on summer camps. And one of the summers that I got to be a part of was um, we were in the book of Hebrews. And so the theme of that summer, we themed it as relentless, relentless. And the tagline was no less than all. That was the thing. This is the this is my lanyard from that year. It is very messed up and, and used up. But this was my summer staff badge and, and land or the the little tag part from my summer. And one of, if you've ever been to summer camp, it's probably like a summer camp that you've been a part of. When the students got there, we split them up into teams. And those teams are to compete all week long at summer camp. They're to compete in sports and tourneys, things like basketball, volleyball, and, and ultimate frisbee. There's other recreation games that we'd have them compete in. Uh, their, their, their team cheers. Um, there's all kinds of things that you could get points for the week uh, that you were at camp. And you were trying to compete against all the other teams. But one of the things that Global still does, and that's very interesting, one of the ways to get involved in competition, if your team's not good at sports or activities or the games or, or anything like that, you can memorize scripture. That's the way to kind of pick up the pace if your team's not winning in sports, is we would make these summer packs of five verses that the students could learn, or they could learn the Romans road, or just really popular verses, really really meaningful verses in scripture, and they would have to learn five at a time, and they'd go to their counselor, and they would recite those, counselor would make notes, and we would, we would add points to the team for the team taking scripture serious. And then Global had been doing this for so long, but this summer in particular, our leader decided to get the point across that Jesus is everything and that it's going to cost you no less than all on the big reveal night of the team that was going to win the week by all of their efforts, sports, memorization, all of it. The team that was going to win that week. We put up on the screens, the team stands up and cheers, and then that moment is interrupted because we had these dramas that go on. And it was, whoa, 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 the moment was interrupted. And 
this team, there's teams that would put all those efforts in sports and stuff. The big switch that year was that all of your sports, your games, and all the things that you've been working for didn't matter. The only thing that mattered was Christ. And let me tell you, those weeks we would see teams that were in the lead go to middle of the pack where teams were at the bottom that took scripture memorization more serious than others would go all the way to the top. And students were so upset. They were like, what was it all for, blah, blah. You know, just people were upset. And even student pastors were coming up to us and was like, I can't believe that switch on the students. I mean, it's got my students torn up. But I tell you what, you know, it was tough to deal with the students in that situation. They were upset. But it got the point across that when it comes to Christ, all this other stuff in life, riches, possessions, and to Christ here, even your family and your own life, it falls short to being more important than Christ himself. No less than all. What will it cost you? No less than all. It will cost you everything. Jesus says this in verse 33. He says, so therefore, anyone who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Now, Jesus says this and. And that seems, like a, that seems like a hard thing to, to, to accept. That seems like a hard thing to, to live by. And, and Christ knew that you couldn't do it on your own. That's why he sent the Spirit. He sent you a helper. And that's why the church still exists today as well. We're, there, we're here to help you. The people around you are here to help you do this. And Christ knows that you can't be perfect in this. But the thing is, is Christ is trying to get you to understand what it costs to be a disciple of his. And it will cost you no less than all. It will cost you everything. Thank you so much just for listening today. And I encourage you to just keep on with your reading, get into the scriptures and, and, and just really enjoy this time of walking through this New Testament challenge. And uh, yeah, so church, if you need anything, we love you and uh, we'll see you soon. All right, bye.